Hello. Um, I'm over here. It's been so long since I filmed a clip that my camera forgot how to record me. Love that. Hi friends, it's the worst vlogger slash just YouTuber in general of all time. All right, maybe that's, you know, a little far stretched. In my last vlog, I said that January was a really just slumpy month, not just for reading, but life in general. And yeah, it never really changed. So let's do a little uppity duppity date on what I've been reading since we last talked, shall we? The only other book that I read in January was actually a reread of The Hunger games aka my favorite book series of all time i reread this for the hunger along a readathon that rhiannon is hosting on her channel and other places i think like there's like a hashtag on twitter you know i'll leave her little like announcement video about it down below I'm not gonna go on about this one for too long because obviously y'all 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 know what this is y'all know that i love it i really just fell in love with katniss everdeen all over again reading this it was so nostalgic i actually decided since i have so many freaking copies of this book and I have this edition in hardcover as well that this will be the time that I annotate it. Finally, I've been wanting to annotate this series for a while. So yeah, as you see, there's a lot of tabs, but there's also just like, you know, little doodles and highlights and sticky notes and just all that fun all up in this book. But yeah, I love this. I love Katniss. I love Gail. The end. Then yesterday I started The Cruel Prince by Holly Black and tonight I finished it. I'm gonna be trying to do a whole lot of reading in February because another readathon that I can talk about real quick is the Booktube Games. This is like a month long readathon and it's a little like hard to explain basically. There's five different teams and you're on one of the teams and you update what you read every single day and at the end of it whoever reads the most pages in total is the winner. Unfortunately if you haven't already signed up up. it's too late because it's already started but you can just play along for fun pick a team keep track of your own numbers but yeah so after five million different people telling me to read this and basically all of book twitter being like it's the best thing ever i was like i guess it's time to uh, pick it up if you don't know this is a fairy fairy fay book about this girl named jude who is not a fay because of course but when she's young she is brought there this dude just like crashes into her house and he takes her and her sisters kills her parents and they go off fey world because one of her sisters is half fey so he basically came to uh reclaim her and then he takes responsibility for the two other girls too because he's like eh, it was my ex-wife's kids so <laughs> and it's basically about this girl trying to survive in this world that is not equipped for her because she's not a fey i really enjoyed this i'm giving it four stars it wasn't perfect it wasn't like as good as the hype i would say but i did really enjoy this i loved you as a character she is so headstrong and she's so determined to make herself fit into this world because she's like i was brought here i grew up here i am going to make my place i'm going to figure things out and she doesn't take no shit and i just absolutely loved her and then there's cardin aka okay? <laughs> the cruel prince honestly not as bad as i was expecting him to be i feel like his role in this is not really that prominent this is really definitely jude's story and i thought there would be a whole lot more of cardin the world building in this i would say is kind of awful just because you have to have a knowledge of faith things to really understand everything and <clears throat> I don't. Like she'd be like, oh, this is the court of the termites. And I'm like, is it an actual termite? Like what is, mm, this is the unseelies. What does that mean? It's almost like Holly Black is like, you should know things about Faye. And I'm like, but consider this, I don't. I wouldn't say it affected my reading, except that I would just be like, huh, at some points. But like, it wasn't like, I didn't understand the plot as a whole, you know? I thought the characters and the political relationships and all of that was just really, really freaking intriguing. I think Jude's position in this world is so cool because she's basically raised by this dude who's not her dad but she kind of has to accept it because she literally has no other choice and to see the way she reacts to this world compared to the way her sisters react it was just really really interesting and I can't wait to see where the next one goes oh my god my camera's gonna die I gotta hurry I will say the pacing of this was a little off I think the beginning was and it wasn't even slow really but compared to with some of the things that happened at the end and all this information that is suddenly spewed out at you. The pacing with that just felt a little off. I really enjoyed it overall. <laughs> hey, it's a girl. Horrible vlogger. I know I keep saying this in every clip and it's probably annoying, but the fact is, my last clip was February 2nd. Today is February 13th.
So since then I've read three books really mad that I didn't film clips as I was reading them because that's the whole point of a freaking reading vlog First book I have to talk about is A Mother's Reckoning by Sue Klebold. This is a memoir Sue Klebold is the mother of one of the Columbine shooters So considering the subject, it's a pretty intense memoir, but I thought it was so well done I believe I gave it four stars Stop barking at me i'm busy i really appreciated the message of this book i thought going into it that it might be just her trying to redeem her son in some way show us the good parts kind of like a man this is horrible that it happened to me even though i didn't you know he wasn't raised this kind of way and while she does talk about raising him and them growing up she really doesn't come at this as a woe is me kind of pity me sort of stance it has such a great focus on mental health and mental health awareness while also not blaming her son's violence on mental health. The way that Sue has taken this absolute tragedy and used it to fuel herself and become this activist for realizing the signs of depression and speaking out about gun violence and just all of that. It was it was really interesting and really hard hitting. There were some parts that were a bit slower, a bit repetitive, which is why I didn't give it a full five stars but I do highly recommend it. Next, I read Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Young. This is a really complex fantasy world where there's this caste system where these demon creatures are kind of at the top, these half demon half human creatures are in the middle and then normal ass humans are at the bottom. Our main character Lei is one of the normal ass humans and she ends up being chosen as a paper girl which is which is how like the demon people at the top recognize that humans matters too. <laughs> Basically these girls are selected every year to go be the king's paper girls or in other words sex slaves. Definitely a trigger warning for a sexual assault and rape with this book. I gave this one 3.5 stars. I wanted to love it more than I did, but there was just something about the world that was holding me back. It's definitely a very lush and creative fantasy setting, but I felt like it just didn't completely paint a picture that I wanted. I felt there was a lot being mentioned all in once, a little info dumpy, and there were segments that I was like, oh, that sounds interesting, but it was never explored. So I I really had no idea what it meant. With the Paper Girls storyline, it does put us in a very narrow little box in this world. And so I think I just wanted to see more of it. I also listened to this on audiobook and I don't think I would recommend it that way because there's just so much to take in. And also this is probably a nitpicky personal thing but the audiobook narrator's voice just always sounded happy even when something horrible was happening. So it kind of threw me off a little. I did really love the relationship in this book though. It is a female female relationship. I really love how the relationship between the two girls grew rose and how they respect each other and lift one another up. I did find myself kind of wanting the other girl's perspective as to be like read from because Ren was just so interesting. I do plan to continue this series because I think it has the potential to get a lot better for me where the first book ended that there's just a lot of potential there. And finally the last book that I have to update you on which I also gave 3.5 stars is A Study in Charlotte by Brittany Caballero. This story follows Jamie Watson and Charlotte Holmes who are descendants of Watson and Holmes, Holmes and Watson. So in this book they are real people not just characters but there was also stories written about them and I Sir Aaron Coyle Doyle man dude is involved somehow. I really was a little confused on that point which is one of the reasons it's at 3.5 stars. I truly know absolutely nothing about Sherlock Holmes as you can see by me trying to remember the author's name. But I was interested in this just because I heard a lot of good things about it. I hate children so much. And it was a very interesting book and it was a lot darker than I expected. It takes place at a boarding school. 
love a good boarding school setting. Basically, there's a murder, so Jamie and Charlotte team up to try and solve it. I also thought it was really interesting that Charlotte dealt with a drug addiction. Again, I don't know if that's like a Sherlock Holmes thing, but it's not something you really see often in YA, and so it was interesting to have that represented. I do wish it was talked about a little more and just explored better than the ways that it was. It was always kind of brushed over in my opinion, and I think talking about it more so would have been great. Maybe it will in next books. I don't know. The murder was super interesting and all the mystery stuff absolutely had me hooked and I didn't guess how it was all gonna end. I didn't like that Jamie and Charlotte became best friends so fast. It's like they meet, they decide to solve this murder and suddenly they're best friends. I don't know, I just wanted a better buildup between their friendship because it was all just very quick. This novel as a whole is very fast paced and I think that hurts it sometimes. I think it just goes over important details a little too quickly sometimes. Still, I did enjoy it and I do think I will continue with this series as well. Whew, okay, there we go. That's my update. I am currently reading and hoping to finish today, although I'm not sure if I will. The Good Daughter by Karen Slaughter. I am loving this book so far. It basically follows these two girls who are sisters. In the beginning, we see them as children when something horrific happens to them. And then 28 years later, we follow them as they are both in their careers. And in their hometown, there is a school shooting, two people are dead, and they end up both finding themselves wrapped up in this. Every single chapter, is interesting and thrilling and that doesn't happen a lot in like a mystery thriller novel. I've never read a Karen Slaughter book before but I'm really glad that I chose this one because it is so good so far. I love that these characters are so developed and given the time to be developed while also not taking away from how interesting the mystery-ish part of this is. It's just really freaking good so I'm gonna go back to reading it. Hello, I don't know if you can tell but a bench was just... <laughs> crying. I was indeed crying over a book, but not the book that I was talking about in the last clip. So we have to do a little rewind first. So first, The Good Daughter. I finished that a couple days ago and I really enjoyed it. I give it four stars. I really loved how this explored the characters and really took the time to flesh them out. And they were just really interesting characters to follow. One of the side characters, Lenore, absolutely loved her. She's trans, which I thought was a really awesome inclusion because it doesn't focus on her being trans it's just brought up once and I don't know if the way it was brought up was exactly the right way to go about it it was a little off to me but I, I'm not I don't know that's not my lane but I did think it was nice to just have a trans character the only thing that kept this from being a five star is that I do think the mystery aspect of this kind of got lost while I did love the fleshing out of the characters I think during that we just kind of forgot about the mystery. It seemed like it wasn't a big deal. So when we got to the end when we were finally gonna reveal everything that happened, it just didn't hit me that much because I got to the point where I wasn't really caring about it. And really I don't think this is that much of a thriller, at least compared to the thrillers that I've read so far. It's just more mystery crime. But it was still really good and I would recommend it. However, I don't know if I've already said it, definitely trigger warning for rape and gun violence. So on to the book I was crying about. The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna. This is a story about two sisters living in France during World War II. One of them is very headstrong and openly rebellious. She doesn't like authority and she loves going against it. The other sister is a little more calm. She's a mother. She's a family woman just trying to live her life. So when the war breaks out, they find themselves in two very different places, both surviving in different manners. This was such a beautiful, heartbreaking at times story. I don't think it really hit me just how much I was, I don't know if I would say invested or impacted until the end when I was just suddenly crying. I realized I was I was impacted. If you like World War II stories, I think you'll definitely like this. I think it's an interesting look at World War II though. I know I personally haven't read any that takes place in France and the focus on what women were doing especially was so wonderful to read about. These are based on 
people like inspired by real people and it's just really incredible what they were doing there the sacrifices that were made how people just really came together in a horrible time i especially loved Isabel, the rebellious sister. I thought she just had so much spunk and she was so fun to read about. I haven't decided on a rating yet, but I think I'm gonna give it five stars because it was just, it was just really good. The only thing is I don't know if it really sunk its claw in me as something I'll be thinking about in the long run. So I don't know, we'll see, but still really great. Would recommend, obviously. Okay, I am going to wrap up this reading vlog here because I've been filming it for a while now and uh, need to just get it up. Because of my weird like slumpy state, this vlog was definitely a little different from the usual. I would say this one focused pretty much solely on what I was reading, not like little life stuff. So let me know if you watched to this point, do you prefer reading vlogs with like lifey stuff in it? Or do you like reading vlogs that, you know, just focus on the reading? Or do you not care? I don't know, I'm probably overthinking this, but yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.